Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Now, originally, I was going to have this episode uploaded in September, but anyway, today we're going to talk about a famous railway story and a childhood classic, The Little Engine That Could. But first, how about a little backstory on the source material? The original story by Waddy Piper tells the story of a special train filled with toys and good food that must be taken over the mountain to the town by the next day. But unfortunately, the engine pulling the train breaks down and the toys need to ask for help from the next engine who passes by. Three larger engines come along but they all refuse for their own different reasons. But when all hope seems lost, a small blue engine comes along and gladly accepts the job. The story was used to teach children the value of optimism and hard work. And when I was little, I loved this story when the teachers at kinder care read this to me. However, before I read the book, and not too long before my sister was born, my grandmother shown me a short movie based on the book. And to this day, it's been deemed by fans as the most famous and a childhood classic. Released a home video on November 22nd, 1991, the movie is The Little Engine That Could. So, let's get rolling. When the engine pulling the birthday train breaks down, Georgia is taken by the doctor engine back to the roundhouse. So, the toys need to flag down another engine. But, after three other engines refuse to help, a little blue switch engine named Tilly volunteers to help the toys over a treacherous mountain to reach the town that holds a little boy's upcoming birthday party. So, what do I think? Well, I loved it ever since I was little, and I still love it to this very day. Plus, I think it's a lot better than the original book. But now, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The movie was directed by Dave Edwards, who also co-produced the film with Mike Young. It was animated at Collado Animation in Wales and co-financed by Universal Studios through their MCA Universal Home Video Arm and S4C, Wales' dedicated Welsh language channel. It was released to VHS by MCA. Now, ever since I was little, I thought this movie was very charming and classical, and like the crippled lamb that I blogged a few Christmases ago, this movie is about 30 minutes long. But on the other hand, I can't believe that Crest Animation made a CGI remake. But. While that film may have some charm and humor to it, as well as decent voice acting, I don't think it tops the early 90s version. As for the animation, well, for early 90s hand-drawn animation, it looks pretty good. And while the movie's story mostly follows the original book, there are a few scenes that I found very memorable. For example, there's the opening scene involving a little boy named Eric who reads about the little engine and hoping that it'll arrive in time for his birthday the following day, despite his sister Jill not believing so. And while that subplot is non-existent in the original book, it does give a good introduction of what's to come for the rest of the movie. Also, I just love the scenery during the opening credits, and the part where Rolo and the toys load up the birthday train before they, before they depart. However, in my opinion, the trip up the mountain is very intense. 
for example, a wolf and a bald eagle ridicule Tilly for being small, a thunderstorm breaks, and a rock smashes into a bridge's support beam, causing said bridge to collapse. And while Tilly does make it across, she unfortunately loses the last train car. But what's even worse is when Tilly comes across a snowy cave with a spooky echo, and an avalanche knocks her out unconscious. But, in my opinion, the best part of the movie is the song, Nothing Can Stop Us Now, which is sung while Tilly pulls the birthday train up the mountain, and when they go down, while chanting her famous quote, I think I can. And in my opinion, while this is the only song in the movie, I think it's really awesome. I mean, it's the kind of song that inspires you to do your best in order to accomplish your goals. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang Notes, let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought them to life. Our title character, Tilly, is voiced by veteran voice actress Kat Susie. Best known from Tiny Toon Adventures, Rugrats, Space Jam, and Sonic Set AM. Believe it or not, this was actually Kat Susie's first voice role, and I think she does wonderful. Plus, not only is Tilly cute, but she has the personality of a tomboyish little girl, and she's completely fearless of anything that is in her way. Also to note, in the original book, the little engine had no occupation other than being just an engine. But in the film, Tilly works as a switch engine, and she's made much smaller than the other locomotives she works with. Next we come to Tilly's best friend, Chip, a small brown bird voiced by Scott Menville. Best known from My Little Pony Generation 1, Teen Titans, and Final Fantasy X-2. In my eyes, Chip is a very good friend with Tilly, and I like when Chip tells Tilly that she'll get her chance to pull a train sooner or later, and I also like when Chip stands up to tower. Speaking of which, next we have the engine's employer, Tower, voiced by Neil Ross, whom I remember from the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, an American Tale, and Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. You know, I really hate this guy. Not only is he abusive and rude, especially when he blows his horn at people, but he also thinks that Tilly is too little to pull a train. But what's even worse, he doesn't seem to care that the birthday train won't make it on time. Jeez. What a real douchebag this guy is! Neil Ross also voices Doc, the Doctor Engine. I find this character to be nicer than Tower, due to the fact that his job is to keep engines healthy and help broken down engines. The scene where Doc sticks out is when he examines Georgia and takes her back to the roundhouse. Plus, Doc advises the toys to flag down another engine that passes by. Next we come to Roll the Clown, voiced by the legendary Frank Welker. Like in the book, Rollo is in charge of the birthday train, and in my opinion, Rolo is a fun character, plus he has a good heart, and he loves to be social. However, Rolo can be extremely forgetful, and 
he has a major stuttering problem. Plus, there are times when Rolo gets into an argument with Grumpella. The other toys in the film include Jeepers the Monkey and Perky the Baby Elephant, both voiced by Frank Welker, a ballerina doll named Missy, also voiced by Cat Susie, Handy Pandy, played again by Neil Ross, Grumpella, the grumpy toy bird, played by B.J. Ward, and a stretching doll named Stretch, also voiced by Scott Manville, despite the fact that he has only one line, though. Next we have Georgia, voiced by Beverly Banfield, who has been in The Curse of Dracula from 1979, Pound Puppies, and Roots, The Next Generations. To me, Georgia is a sweet engine, especially with Tilly, which I think makes her Tilly's second best friend. However, while Georgia is assigned to the birthday train, I did feel bad when her boiler malfunctioned and her smokestack exploded. We also have Farnsworth, also voiced by Frank Welker. Farnsworth is assigned to pull the passenger train. To me, I think Farnsworth is really snobbish and arrogant, and when the toys ask him for help, he's kind of indignant at the idea. Next we have Pete, a red engine with a smoking habit, voiced by Peter Cullen. Best known as Optimus Prime from the Transformers franchise, and Eeyore from a few Winnie the Pooh films. Pete is assigned to pull the freight train with a printing press. In my eyes, while he is stern and gruff, Pete appears to be a bit laid back and relatively good natured, and he seems to be on good terms with Tilly. Unfortunately, Pete refuses to help the toys over the mountain because he thinks his job is way too important. Finally, we have Jebediah, the oldest and most run-down of the engines, voiced by Frank Welker. Man, Frank is everywhere in this movie. Anyway, Jebediah is assigned to pull the milk train. In my eyes, Jebediah is polite and all, and when the toys ask him for help, he said he would love to, if he weren't so old to go over the mountain. Gee. Anyway, let's move on to my final words. Overall, The Little Engine That Could is a wonderful little movie. And while it is 30 minutes long, the story is so captivating and charming that you won't even notice. The character designs are great, the animation is pretty good, and the voice acting is absolutely spectacular, especially with actors like Frank Welker doing a great variety of voices, and Kat Susie doing wonderful for her first film role, giving Tilly a determined personality. And I like that this movie stays true to the original source material, while expanding the narrative into a larger story of self-discovery. And I like how it teaches children to always believe in yourself and never giving up. I just hope that someday this movie will get a DVD release in the future. But for now, the movie is currently available to watch on YouTube, and I highly recommend everybody, young or old, to watch it. And so, 
I give this film a full 100%. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me next time as we head over to France to look at an underrated elephant movie, Mustang Power.